Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to a new era of Shadow the Hedgehog. The new era of Shadow, shedding light on the ultimate life form panel at Enemy Expo. My name is Zeno Robinson. I will be your host today so we can celebrate not just the fastest thing alive, but also the ultimate life form. Yeah? That's right. Today we'll be talking about everyone's favorite anti-hero hedgehog, Shadow the Hedgehog! Now, as some of you may know, he may not be just a hedgehog. Who exactly is the ultimate life form? What more can we learn about him? These are questions we will discover the answers to, not just in a new game coming out later this year, but also, oh, you guys can cheer, you guys can cheer for the new game, yeah, yeah. Uh, but also a brand new animated prologue from Studio Gigex, give it up for them. You guys are gonna love it. Okay, now let's get this panel started. Without further ado, Allow me to introduce our panelists. Our first one needs no introduction. He's a director, producer, designer, screenwriter, the head of Sonic Team, and co-creator of Shadow the Hedgehog. Please give a warm welcome to the legend, Takashi Izuka! No less is, no less is legendary. Please welcome the voice of the Black Blur, the ultimate life form, Kirk Thornton! <laughs> Next up, a legend in her own right, marking her debut as the kind-hearted and gentle Maria Robotnik, Stephanie Shea! And rounding out our panel, the incredible directors at Studio Gigex, Alan Wan, Christopher Luck, and Kevin Molina Ortiz. Okay, everybody, I'm just gonna wait for you guys to sit down, get comfy. How are we feeling today? How's Anime Expo treating you? Izuka-san, I'll start with you. Uh, I'm happy to be here, so thank you for coming. So I'm glad to talk about Shadow today. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Kirk. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess it's me. Um, I, I, I haven't been to an AX for like five years, but like the thing that was going to bring me back was this. So yeah. <laughs> Alan, Chris, Kevin, how we feeling? We're doing good. Shadow X. Oh, no, no, no. Sonic X Shadow Generation. There you go. Yeah. Go. Go. yeah. Full house. Glad to see it. Awesome. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> Woo! I'm very nervous. All right. <laughs> Give him a warm welcome. Make him feel welcome. Okay, I'm glad everyone's enjoying themselves. Just a quick temperature check. Who here's been a Shadow fan for at least one year? One, one year, okay, okay. How about five years? Okay, okay. Uh, 10 years? Wow, wow, Tw 20 years. Wow, look at that. <laughs> okay, it's clear there are some shadow fans here. But there might be newer people. I saw, I didn't see everybody's hand. So uh, let's maybe walk through Shadow's history for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Shadow the Hedgehog, also known as the ultimate life form, was first introduced in Sonic Adventure 2 in 2001 and served as a rival to Sonic. Sonic Adventure 2, yeah. Sonic Adventure 2 fans. My personal favorite. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> His next appearances were Sonic Heroes and Sonic Battle in 2004. Sonic Battle? We have Sonic Battle fans here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He had his first standalone game in 2005, Shadow the Hedgehog. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Outside of just the games, he made several appearances in various forms of Sonic media, including the IDW comics. We have some comics readers in the house. The animated series Sonic X. 
Sonic X fans. <laughs> Sonic Boom, and more recently, Sonic Prime. Now, and he will be making his live action debut this year. Yeah. <laughs> He's been a fan favorite for many years and has been rival, dark hero, and occasional ally to Sonic and his friends. This year, being the year of Shadow, we'll be seeing more of his story in Sonic X Shadow Generations. But you guys, we're all here to learn more about Shadow today, right? Right? There are some things you might not know. And who better to enlighten us about the ultimate life form than his father himself? Takashi... Izuka. <laughs> Everyone give it up for Izuka-san, please. Uh, now, Izuka-san, we just went through a, a brief history of Shadow's appearances in media. Now, what were his origins? What led to his creation? Okay, I think people know what this one is. <laughs> あの、so Shadow was really born in 1999 when we began development on Sonic Adventure 2. In the beginning, we kind of thought, oh, we want a rival character, something to really contrast Sonic. So we need a rival character uh, in this game. But at that time, uh, all of the team flew over to America, and we started living and working in America. And when we got there, we realized dark heroes, heroes like uh, Spawn, were really popular in America. And that really inspired us to make Shadow uh, a different kind of character. And that's what, when we thought, we don't want him to be a rival to Sonic. We want him to be a dark hero. Uh, and that's really the, where Shadow was born from an idea. I think uh, it, it's really cool to have characters like like Spawn, who's like a character like uh, we I, in the West are familiar with, be the inspiration for someone like Shadow. I had it in my notes that I, I, I was under this impression that he was also inspired by Vegeta from the Dragon Ball franchise. But wait, wait, but Izuka-san, Izuka-san told me that's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. So I just wanted to clear that up because I thought that too. But it's it, it's super cool that like, <laughs> it's not, though. It's not, though. <laughs> um, what were some of your inspirations about designing Shadow's, uh, his design and his personality? はい、もうあの、ここにもあのパネル今表示されてますけども、ま、ソニックのダークバンということで、ま、最初はこう、色々、あの、ナバリエーションのデザインを考えたんですけども、ま、これをあの、ま、当時サンフランシスコで、あの
あのスキンとしてあの実装することを決定しましたので、まあ、このゲームでしか遊べないキャラクターということでぜひ皆さんあのご期待ください。So, we do have the design for the Terios character, which was a, a concept、uh, design for the character that didn't make it all the way through. We ultimately uh, uh, went with the shadow design that everyone knows and loves. But coming out this fall, this October,、uh, in Sonic X Shadow Generations, we are also offering a skin to turn Shadow into Terios, so you can play as Terios inside of the game. <laughs> That's really cool. He looks cool, right? He looks. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's, it's really cool as a, a gigantic fan of, of Sonic the franchise and Shadow to like, see artwork of the developmental stages of how Shadow came to be.、Uh, is there any significance to the name Tyrios? Why did you guys settle on that name? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I was wondering if it meant something. <laughs> I think it's really cool that you get to play as the Tyrio skin in, in Generations. That's really cool. I'm excited for that.、Uh, now, Izuka san,、uh, can you tell us what, what makes Shadow different from Sonic? Hi. So, this is. まああのまあ、一言で違いを言えばやっぱりあのダークヒーローというところなんですけども、まあ、ソニックがあの正義や平,平和を守るあのまさにあのヒーローなんですけども、まあ、シャドウはあの目的のためなら誰がどうなろうと関係ないっていうあの危うさを持つキャラクターなんですねだから決してシャドウは正義のヒーローではないだからあの道端で困ってる人がいても助けないっていう、まあ、そういう大きなあのソニックとシャドウの違いがあって、まあ、この性格の違い完全にこう真反対なソニックとシャドウの性格に加えてでシャドウはあのもう愛すべき、えー、マリアのためにこう命がけでこの星を守るっていう正義ではないけどマリアが愛した星を守るっていうのが彼の,あの一番の目的なので、まあ、そういうあの彼の,あの内なる思いっていうのも、まあ、彼のシャドウの魅力だと思います。So, to sum it up in really one word, I'd say, you know, Dark Hero is what really defines Shadow and makes him different from Sonic. So, Sonic will be a very positive, cheerful,、uh, you know, character that's going to go out there and do whatever it takes、uh, to bring peace to the world. You know, he wants to see justice kind of、uh, played out.、Uh, he's very much a true hero, but Shadow is more of a dark hero. He's going to do whatever it takes to get the job done, he's going to focus on what that thing that he needs to do is. And only you know, really focus on getting that done.、Uh, so it, it's not really like it's a little bit of a selfishness, but it's also because he's such a dark hero and he's pushing towards his goals.、Uh, it really defines him as a character differently from Sonic、uh, and makes him unique.、Uh, and really, you know, when we talk about the, the differences between Sonic and Shadow, you know, Sonic will do whatever it takes to save the planet because of the justice and、uh, really the, the truth in. He, in him as a character. But Shadow, he wants to protect the planet because Maria, who is so close to, loves the planet. And so he's doing it out of this love and connection with Maria that he will also do whatever it takes to save the planet. So they're, they're both very much heroes, but it's that dark hero element that really makes Shadow cool and unique. Yeah, I, I think the best kind of anti hero is somebody who、uh, has something important that they fight for because it really gives them、uh, a lot of layers. And Shadow's relationship with Maria is a really, really cool, integral, central driving force for Shadow.、Uh, having that、uh, being told by Izuka san himself is super cool.、Um, so I think I can speak for many of us when I say we've all been waiting for years for new pieces of Shadow's past. And his backstory. So, why are we telling his story now in Sonic X Shadow Generations? Hi, I know, I'm going to talk about the story of 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 the もともとソニック・ジェネレーションズっていうのはソニックを知らない人たちにクラシック・ソニックモダン・ソニックの良さを知ってもらおうっていうゲームだったので、まあ、今回の、えー、シャドウを世界中の人に知ってもらおうっていうにはいいあのフォーマットだったんじゃないかなと思っていますで、まあ、シャドウといえばやっぱりあの悲しいバックグラウンドのあるストーリーなので、まあ、今回の,あのこのゲームでも
あのそのストーリーにはかなり力を入れてますのでご期待ください。So, as you know, this December we will see Shadow featured in movie three. It should be a really great movie.、Uh, and in order to really introduce everyone to Shadow before we get to the movie, we wanted to release something that could really do that, would be a good vehicle for that. And that's where we thought up Sonic X Shadow Generations. Originally, Sonic Generations was a game that was meant to introduce everyone to Sonic the Hedgehog. So, it had classic Sonic in there, it had modern Sonic in there, and it was really like all these great moments from Sonic's、uh, legacy in one title. And by adding Shadow into that package, we now are able to introduce Shadow as a character inside of that same game alongside Sonic.、Uh, and as everyone knows, you know, Shadow does have kind of a sad、uh, background story,、uh, and we did want to spend a lot of time and, and energy kind of portraying that in the Shadow Generations. Side of the game, so we really hope everyone enjoys the game and enjoys the story in Sonic X Shadow Generations. Woo! Wow. Well, I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Izuka san, for your you. incredible insight into Shadow.、Uh, I've been a huge fan of Sonic for many years, and it's been、uh, one of the greatest honors of my life to be able to sit here and speak with you directly <laughs> about <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog and Sonic. I also think it's the perfect time to show the world Shadow's charm and story. And who better to help us do that than our voice actors? <laughs> If there's one thing we know about Shadow, it's that his past follows him everywhere he goes. With all these new elements of Shadow being revealed, and we have the upcoming animation, I'd like to ask our actors who are breathing new life into these scenes and into these moments their thoughts and experiences with them. Uh, uh, Kirk, you've been voicing Shadow for, for years now. Yeah.、Uh, do, you, uh, do you do anything new when exploring this like, previously unseen、uh, side of Shadow? I'm learning more today than I have learned <laughs> in years、Me、doing、too. Shadow. I mean, I'm, I'm getting so much stuff here. It's amazing. I wish I'd been able to sit down with Izuka san sooner. Sooner? Sooner. <laughs> yes, I speak for a living. Thank you very much.、Um, no, I mean,、uh, yeah,、um, over the, because over the years, Shadow has always been very cool and unflappable. And, you know, recently we've been. I've been、uh, discovering different sides of Shadow with、uh, the, the Twitter takeovers and、uh, like the, the, the Lego commercials.、So、I'm, I'm yeah, the Lego commercial. <laughs> It was so good. <laughs> I'm seeing you were trending for that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing different sides of Shadow, but、um, as far as the game goes,、um, the cool, unflappable side, there's always been something underneath it. And, Finally, we're, we're starting to pull out all those things and figure out what is driving that cool, what's driving that unflappable, what's brewing under the surface. So、um, that's, that's what we've been getting、um, with this game, you see. And the team has decided to let a little bit of that emotion out at times. And it's been, so it was a lot of fun、um, you know, doing this game because, you know, playing down, playing down, playing down, and then all of a sudden, Being able to erupt and, and let some of that emotion out that's been brewing underneath all this time. That's so cool. I, I really love sort of the, the,、um, the methodical、uh, artistic approach you take to Shadow about the emotions and how much to show and how little to show.、Um, and, you know, there's so much, I'm sure, new stuff in this game that like, will reveal more sides to them that I'm like, really excited to see.、Uh, so, from the new things that you've seen, has it changed your understanding of the character at all? After all these years, is there anything new that popped up during your performances for, performances for, the, <laughs> oh, well, for the game? Oh, absolutely. As I was mentioning, you know, all the, <laughs> up, up, until spoil. Recently, <laughs> <laughs> up until recently, I hadn't gotten to explore his history. I hadn't gotten to explore what happened with Maria and, and how,、um, how he was created and, and his whole mission in life.、Yeah. And,、uh, and that, is, that is flushed out. In this game,、um, you know, and it's, but it's, a, it's been a real team effort. It's, it's, it's all the people at Sega, it's, it's Jack Fletcher, the director, who's incredible, and,、uh, and we've all done this exploration together to try to find it. And what's, what's really cool is that, you know, even though, you know, there'll, there'll be like eight, nine people in on a session, and they're all throwing out, you know,、um, 
what they think we should be doing, what path we should be taking. And, and we all kind of agree, yes, we're taking this path. And yet um, what's really wonderful is that sometimes after we do all this work and the animation gets done and they send it back to us and we go, oh, shoot, we missed something. And, and the Sega has given us the, the license to go back and go, Yes, this is how we fix it. And, uh, you know, because it's expensive to go back into the studio and, and redo something. Mm -hmm. But they're taking the time and giving us the opportunity to go back and get it right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, as, as big of a fan as I've been of this franchise for so many years, this might be like my first time sort of hearing about like how a typical session would go or like the creative process from like animation to voice to screen, then corrections. It's, it's really like fascinating and it's really cool to hear like how particular and how specific and how careful uh, and, and precious we are about this franchise and the characters and all the love and, and, and work that goes into it. And it's really clear on like when you see see it on the screen. It, it's so clear. So uh, it, it's super cool how much time and attention goes into Shadow. Uh, and like, you know, it's, it's cool that the events of, of this game, I'm sure, alter how like you've played Shadow and probably have altered how you're going to play Shadow, oh, yeah. like moving forward, right? Yeah. Um, so that's super awesome. Uh, but I want to take this over to Stephanie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stephanie, Maria is so integral and so important to Shadow's story. Uh, she's such a beloved character. Uh, do you hear that? <laughs> Look at her. Uh, <laughs> no, don't say she looks like Aaron. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> because we know. <laughs> um, how did you, how did you uh, step into her character? How did you find her voice? Um, I really, thankfully, had, you know, our voice director, Jack Fletcher, and the entire Sonic team. They were, like, there was a lot of faces on, on a Zoom call when we were <laughs> recording. And they had so much insight, and they helped uh, guide, you know, and guide me in terms of, like, performance. Modes. I think for me, I was, like, mostly focusing on things like her age and then also her, like, illness, right? Mm. Because the illness can be, like, a real trap. Because she has these excited emotions and these concerned emotions or, you know, I, not giving my story. There's certain things that happen, but, like, you're not always, like, I'm weak and sick. You know, like, you, you have to kind of, like, gauge when that comes through and when it's not appropriate. When the emotion is so big that it, like, it kind of, like, uh, overrides whatever, like, physical weakness mm. she might be feeling. And like Kirk said... We actually, which doesn't happen a lot. I don't know if you guys know this. Like when we record other video games, it really doesn't happen a lot. You go in there and you do your lines and you're like, bye. And then that's it. And then like months later, it comes out. And like they brought us back and we redid the scenes. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes three times, wow. you know, or more because they, were, they would tweak things, you know, or they would. And sometimes it was for some kind of like physical element of the action. But other times it was like tweaking the character. Um, Things like that. So uh, I really relied on them, and they were really great. In terms of her sweetness, you know, like, that was easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> you do play a lot of, like, very sweet well, no, characters. Because, like, I'm, I don't know if you could tell this, but, like, I believe... I have. What's really funny, I have, a, I have a really good friend. She's the complete opposite of me, and we're best friends. She's like, all humans are bad. You know, <laughs> of course. You know, of course this person was... So bad. Shadow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, like, and I'm like... No, everyone has the capacity for change. I believe wow. that there's goodness in people. I can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear here's it, the thing. Can you I really it? do believe that. So even like when the world is going crazy and lead, like you're seeing horrible videos of people, and I'm, I'm really like, everyone can change. Like I really, you know, I really believe that. So yeah. So it sounds like you were perfect. You were like the perfect, <laughs> you're a perfect I choice for I the role. I can relate in terms of that. <laughs> uh, and, and from what I know about like you as an artist, like when you were talking about like uh, performing with the specificity and things like that, you're very specific and like juggling. I'm sure like juggling like the illness and like how to weave that into your performance was something super specific. And 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 so I really am like in awe of like how you can do that. You know. Um, I'm sure it'll, like, give her a lot of really cool, like, nuance, uh, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Was there any, like, challenges about balancing those emotions with the physicality, like, in the performances? Um, and, like, 
you know, how did you explore like Maria as a character alongside that? Yeah, definitely. I think that was the hardest thing is like balancing like the illness and the and then the and the emotional moments. And honestly, I relied on the on the team to really guide me because right. like they had a much clearer vision than I did in mm. terms of like how the scenes were playing out and what the moments needed. Um, in terms of the pressure, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a newbie to this whole universe. <laughs> I had no clue until when they said that I was going to be on this panel and I started getting text messages oh, yeah. from people, like telling me like how important this role is, you know, <laughs> and don't mess it up. And <laughs> I mean, by then I I already did it, you know. Right. <laughs> so I, like, yes. But I so I was like, oh gosh, I'm so glad I didn't know, because mm. I think if I knew, I would have so much pressure, oh, you know. I and guess. I luckily I just could just <laughs> be in the world, listen to the direction. And, you know, without having to be like, oh, no, oh, no, don't mess it up, don't mess it up, you know? So, I think that's something we as actors always feel whenever we do anything. It's always like, I hope I don't ruin this. I know a lot of people <laughs> like this thing, you know? Uh, I'm sure you killed it. I'm sure you did amazing. Oh, wow, I should have said that when it came to Maria, right? <laughs> um, okay. Kirk, Stephanie, uh, from each of your perspectives, how would you guys describe the relationship between Shadow and Maria? <laughs> I know. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, to, to, speak in, to speak in actors' terms, um, Maria is my super objective. She mm. is my reason for everything I do. Um, so, yeah, she's just everything. And so, I was created to protect her. And when I fail that mission, it devastates me. Mm. Or Shadow. I, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> devastates Shadow. You're, you're in it. You're yeah. in it now. <laughs> <laughs> and so, that's why, you know, he, he dedicates his life to uh, to protecting Earth because of that, so she is she just yeah everything Her to shadow does is driving sort of yeah. force yeah the complete driving force behind his life. Stephanie. Okay, so in my mind, when I was thinking about it, I was like, she grew up very isolated. She had like nobody, mm -hmm. you know, um, and other than Shadow. And the thing that I could relate to is that like during the pandemic, when we were alone in our houses, <laughs> I had my dog. And I'm not like, and it, check it out. This is going to sound weird. I'm going to say, okay, I shout out to my dog. But um, my dog is also black and reddish tan. Oh. So, um, but, um, and, and my dog is super sweet, but he also gets a little too aggressive when he's trying <laughs> to protect me. See? And so, like, anyways, anyways it's just the parallels. Anyways, mm -hmm. but I do think that, like, you know, and I, like, I'm the driving force. I ground him, you know, he brings him back to, like, the less rabid stage, right, you know, when right. it gets worked up. Um, but, yeah, that's how I kind of, like, uh, I relate to that relationship. Yeah, yeah but I don't hump her leg. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of sort of operates as, like, his moral center, right? Yes, yes like totally, he, like moral compass. Like, Shadow is this incredibly powerful, you know, like, being. And he, that power, if in the wrong hands or with the wrong moral center, can go out of control right, right. Of so, unleashed yeah bad right. and so maria sort of like grounds him in that yeah, like way. reigns him in. Yeah. yeah do you do you guys have a similar relationship like the, who's the who's the moral center here between the two of you <laughs> <laughs> see it's perfect <laughs> amazing uh i really love how in-depth everyone's answers are like as an actor myself uh and as an artist i like it's, it's really cool hearing how everyone works and how you both work uh with character work and in the booth uh, so that's that's super super cool. Maria gives Shadow purpose and direction, and I'm sure they both were each other's only friend. Uh, their bond is integral to their characters as well as the story. So speaking of that bond, we are incredibly excited to show you that bond in action. In motion, we have an exclusive preview of the animated prologue from Studio Gigex. Please enjoy. Professor Gerald made me the ultimate life form. I should be the key to all manner of medicines. Curing you. You and 
grandfather are doing your best. I'm just as happy to spend time with you here while you both research. Wow, I have chills. <laughs> wow, that was an exclusive preview of Sonic X Shadows Generations Dark Beginnings from Studio Gig X. Give it up for them, guys. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I'm low key blown away. That was like a minute of animation. That was like a minute. I can't see the rest of it. Uh, now remember, uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations Dark Beginnings is a three-episode prologue coming out later this year. Uh, here I have with me the directors. Oh, you guys are giving up for that? Yeah, three episodes. Here I have with me the directors, Alan Wan, Christopher Luck, Kevin Molina Ortiz. You guys... That was crazy. That was cinematic. Thank you so much. Like the music, the, the compositing, the everything. It was amazing. Uh, there's so much to unpack, so let's get started. Uh, Alan, what do you think makes these animated episodes different from the animations we've seen from Sonic so far? So uh, when Sego's uh, looking to create these um, animated shorts to retell Shadow's past um, for Sonic X Shadow Generations, when we met with uh, executive producer Yukio Kusumoto, he specifically asked for something that's um, unique and a little bit different, a uh, departure of the past iterations. Mm. And uh, so Sega had a kind of envisioned something that's a bit edgier, uh, something that's a cross between anime and Western animation. And the three of us here all worked on Rise of the TMNT. Um, thank you. And uh, so we felt very confident that we can do this because we're dying to make some real anime. Yeah! <laughs> so when we... <laughs> you, you gotta... You Let know. them cook. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, so we received this really great script written by Ian Flynn. And... Uh, And uh, we were thrilled to have the opportunity to explore a bit more of a darker, more intimate story about Shadow's past. So yeah, we were super excited about this, but um, we were only the pre-production side of the puzzle. We also have a partnering studio uh, named Studio Simich that does the production work for us, led by Matthew, uh, Matthew Chow. Ooh. And, um, and uh, you know, the stuff that you just saw, like we were able to cr have a vision, but to execute it, it requires a lot of technical know-how, so we were very happy to have them uh, to be our partners. And our, their production manager, uh, Ruth Seek, is among the, uh, the audience, please, over there. Yeah. Thank you so much. You guys Thank cute you so it. much. Thank yeah, you so give it much. up for the production managers. <laughs> Uh, Chris, Kevin, Shadow first appeared in, in the video games, right? So 
like what was the approach to sort of adapting like the speed, the emotions, all the abilities you see sort of in the games into animation? Like was there anything like kind of challenging or that you found about that like surprisingly? So I'll speak from like um, the more emotional standpoint. Like so we all, as we all know, Shadow's a very dark, brooding, lone wolf, when I say emo character. Right? <laughs> but he's also one that harbors a lot of grief and emptiness. Mm. You know? So as such, like during the story process, a lot of attention was like paid to the overall feel and the mood of these shots. So when you, you watch the animation, like you'll see a lot more moody shots. Um, we thought it was a great opportunity to like reveal a more personal side of Shadow that's rarely seen, and it's something we feel the audience has been kind of wanting to see for a very long time. Do we agree, audience? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so for his like more tangible aspects of his visual uh, persona on screen, um, a lot of his powers and abilities, you know, you play them in game, you see them in cutscenes, but how would they look in a cinematic representation? And so the expansion on that was essentially our approach was to ask ourselves uh, the question of like, you know, how is the air displaced when Shadow exit a, exits a room super Ooh. quickly? Uh, what does it sound like when his boots activate? Is it automatic? Is it sensed from the friction or from the speed? Does it create heat? All of those really like intricate questions helped us structure and design a new sort of in-depth take on what you see on screen. That's super cool. Right, give it up for that. And you can you can see it right like when he when he when he ran through the hallway all the how the air could have whipped behind him and and the the, the activation of the boots it's it's stuff that like uh, the detail and the emotional the emotions you can you can feel it in, in every in every like frame it was so cool uh, so Chris Kevin a lot of care clearly was placed into the tone the emotions of Shadow and Maria and their story was there any sort of overall messages that you and the team, that all of you wanted to convey about these characters and this story? Yeah, so I'll speak from a technical standpoint. Like, for the quiet moments, again, very careful placement of the camera. You'll definitely see it um, uh, more, like, nuanced, like, lighting were considered. And the facial acting was something we focused on, too, as well. Uh, we wanted acting to be, like, felt, you know, with the dialogue, while not being too cartoony or um, uh, too animated to preserve like a much more like mature feel. Mm. And for, well, as we've said uh, quite a bit on stage, the bond between Shadow and Maria is sort of an anchor point for the short. Um, it's something we really want to put a lens on because it's, you know, in relation to the more cinematic tone, the idea is to make sure that it not only motivates your character, but you have to ask yourself, you know, how does a character react to a decision mm. or to a decision presented to him based on his trauma, based on his past? And so we directed our board artists to really focus in on the subtext, the subtle acting. Shadow's more than just a grimace and a cool face. Mm. Like what accent can you add to that that helps define him more than that? Something that helps communicate this heavier tone and something that can encapsulate the feeling of longing you have for someone that's not there anymore. Wow. 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 And I'm sure, like, with all these elements put together, the, the direction, the animation, the acting, it sort of serves, like, giving multiple layers to, to something that, like, a deeper layer than maybe even, like, an audience may understand it first. Like, like my understanding of Shadow may be, oh, he's just sort of this moody, scowly, you know, individual. But then you peel back those layers into his past and, and how he really feels and give him, like, a lot more emotion and dynamics. And it, it creates a, a very nuanced character. And so it just makes me really excited to watch <laughs> the, 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 the prologues. My jaw, and I'm, y'all jaw, too, dropped when I saw the Gizoid, right? Like, that was crazy. Like, so it's clear there's going to be like a lot of like lore, like deep lore in these episodes. Uh, so what was it like, like introducing like all these new aspects of Shadow's story to, to everyone and like kind of f like fitting that in the greater like Sonic mythos, the greater universe? Was it and 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 like because like me, was there any times you guys fanboyed and what you guys had got to do? <laughs> you know? so, yeah. So, I mean, when we first got the script, I was like, 
you know, well, oh, there's so much lore. And then we started reading all the Wikipedias and all the fandoms. And the more we dwelt <laughs> in the shadows, lore during pre-production, we actually realized, like, wow, there's a lot of fascinating concept twists and turns. Um, there's so much to explore, you know. And it actually got us quite excited because it was, like, really deep, deeper than I thought originally. So, you know, as such, uh, naturally, we took inspiration from, like, Evangelion <laughs> and then FLCO. Uh, uh, nice. a, bit of, a bit of blame, um, you know, like... Evangelion specifically is like excellent with regards to um, visual storytelling uh, with like still or static compositions uh, through a lot of use of unconventional cropping or like symbolic use of B-roll footage we felt was a really good match for this iteration. Yeah, this type of, of visual storytelling uh, that has like that more cinematic, more sophisticated tone, you take everything you've seen from games, like everything you've seen in Shadow's sort of lore and history that's been established in the franchise. And you have to ask yourself, like, what does this look like in this more psychologically complex iteration of the character? So even if there are familiar moments, it's portrayed in such a different way that something that was familiar may feel new. And so there was a lot of moments of excitement from the, the whole team for that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I am equally as excited. I think it's really cool when people who like pour, you can tell when like love is poured into something, especially if you're a fan of it. That was incredibly excite insightful. Uh, thank you, Alan, Christopher, Kevin. I can't wait to see all three. I am gonna stay plugged. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. And everyone, please stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned into uh, Sega and their channels for more information on when the prologue episodes will be out. But to show our thanks for everyone who's in the audience today, you should already have your exclusive posters. Uh, yeah, poster, posters, everybody, we were good. But if, if you don't, uh, please uh, see the staff at the back entrance. Uh, if you don't have your poster, please see them uh, on your way out uh, before you leave to get your poster. Uh, with that, we wanted to show some love to our Sonic community uh, and our Shadow community and answer a few community questions that were submitted earlier this spring. Uh, and they're, they're community Q&A, so yeah. Our first question is from at Zephyr's Sword. Uh, their question is, I don't know if it's going to come on screen, but uh, their question is, if Sonic likes chili dogs, <laughs> what does Shadow like? <laughs> <laughs> Coffee beans? Like yeah, straight? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surely something to rival Sonic, right? Uh, Kirk, do you agree right. with coffee beans, or do you have another answer? Well, I, I, I got something else. I mean, yes, he does love coffee beans. Coffee? Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, you know, the chili dog's kind of, uh, you know, it's junk food, and so he's, he is a hedgehog, so it would have to be something kind of junky, but, but something very particular to him. Right. Um, I think it would be a version of a jalapeno popper. <laughs> it, would, it would be a jalapeno popper, because that's kind of spicy. But in order to darken it up, you know how they got the cream cheese inside there? Right. <laughs> Uh, to add a little sophistication and a little right. darkness to it, right. you'd have to have just a little layer of caviar in that, caviar. In that cream cheese on the jalapeno popper. That, that caviar jalapeno popper. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most cursed thing. <laughs> some, some restaurant now needs to make that and call it the shadow. The shadow, yeah. yeah. I wonder, like, Sonic would, like, not understand, right? Like, that makes no sense to eat. He's like a son. Yeah. How accurate are these answers? <laughs> I don't think he doesn't like <laughs> What about the coffee but, bean? Yeah, but uh, I heard uh, from Shadow that he loves black coffee. Broccoli? Oh. <laughs> wow. Broccoli? No, 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 wow. broccoli, black coffee. Oh, black, black coffee. coffee. Yeah. Black coffee. Black coffee. <laughs> That's very him. Oh, okay. Black coffee. There you go. I was well, about to have to change my whole character. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the fan art now. Shadow of the uh, coffee mug. The next question is from uh, Candy Pirate. Uh, at, at Candy with two eyes, Pirate. This question is for Mr. Izuka. During the battle against Final Hazard in Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow ponders out loud that Sonic might be the real ultimate life form. <laughs> What made Shadow associate Sonic with this title? 
<laughs> yeah. And remember, uh, Shadow gets amnesia almost right after this. So does he remember ever telling Sonic? The Sonic remember? <laughs> like, I don't. I don't know. あのまああのそのそのシーンというのは最後のあのファイナルリザードをスーパーシャドウとスーパーソニック二人でこう倒したシーンの後なんですけどもまあスーパーシャドウはその時にあのこう力尽きてまあ最後こう地球に落ちていくっていう時にあのソニックに対してお前があの究極生命体なのかもしれないなって言うんですけど。あのそれはシャドウが命が尽きると自覚したからそう認識したんであって結局彼は生きてた<笑>なのであのいやいやいややっぱりソニックじゃなくて俺こそがスーパー<笑>俺こそが究極生命体だということで今なってます<笑> uh, So yeah in that scene we have Super Sonic and Super Shadow both、uh, fighting to defeat the final hazard Uh, and, you know, in that moment, Shadow was kind of out of energy. He's falling to Earth. He, he feels defeated, but Sh- Super Sonic is not defeated. And so, in that moment, he thinks maybe Sonic is the ultimate life form, but in the end, he doesn't die. And so, he changes his mind and says, Actually, no. <laughs> Never mind. I am it's the me again. Life form. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's actually a good answer. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I love how you, like, he wakes up and s like, never mind, it's actually me. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. It was me the whole time. Yeah, I was just kidding. <laughs>、uh, our final question is from at pink underscore rose.、Uh, what does Shadow like to do as a relaxing hobby? Relaxing. Does, Shadow, Kirk, does Shadow relax? Is Shadow a relaxed, a, a capable of relaxing? Oh, I, I think absolutely. Yeah? He relaxes? Yeah. I'm wondering. I was like, I don't, I don't know. He doesn't seem very relaxed. Well, what would he do? What would he do? What I do think, think, I think he might do Tai Chi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really, really fast. Really fast.、Uh, so that he starts here and then ends there. And, and they're like, it's like, So, what did you think of the routine? Right. <laughs> you can't even see it. It's、so、right.、Uh, I know that like,、uh, Maria and Shadow, their dream was to like, go to Earth. And I think that could be kind of relaxing for them, right?、Uh, like, if, they were to, if that were to happen with the two of them, what do you guys think they would do? I feel like it would have to be something that like, they can't do on the ark, right? Right. So, like, go swimming, because I don't think there's like, a pool. A beach, a beach. Or, yeah, like a beach, a beach vacation. Um, I think Maria would want to like hang out with the animals. <laughs> Isaac's you know? like, no. She, like, no, no, no. She would just like eat ice cream and binge Netflix.、Yeah. I, I was like, oh, maybe ice cream, you know? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, we are almost at time.、Uh, thank you so much to our panelists i s a a s a n Kurt, Stephanie, Alan, Chris, Kevin, all of you. We love you. You have all been an excellent, excellent crowd. You guys are incredible.、Uh, thank you.、Uh, please follow the Sonic social channels. Stay up to date with Sonic X Shadow Generations. Don't forget to stop by the Sega booth in the Exhibitors Hall at booth 3720 to pick up some exclusive Shadow merch they have this weekend. There's a cool little pin, there's a couple pins, there's some, some posters, some shirts.、Uh, if you're excited to see Shadow's story like I am, Sonic X Shadow Generations will be out October 25th, 2024. That's actually my birthday. <laughs> It's available for pre order right now on all platforms. The Digital Deluxe Edition will include that very cool t e r i o skin that Izuka san mentioned earlier.、Uh, if you sign up for the Sonic X Shadow, X Shadow Generations newsletter, you'll receive the Sonic Jam Legacy skin. Yeah, the Sonic X Shadow Generations launches. Now, before we say goodbye, I see people leaving. Don't leave yet. I want us to do a group chaos control. Yeah? Can we do a chaos control? I brought the chaos emeralds as well.、Uh, so,、uh, can we please? Can we please? Okay. That's so cool. <laughs> Put the emerald down? <laughs>、uh, did you guys want to hold an emerald? Yeah, sure. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you are the master. Okay. <laughs> 
I want to do Do you want to pick one? Yeah. I've done that. So give you the green one, the All other right, green cool. one. Emeralds for everybody. Emerald. I need to know what a key can I use. Emerald. Oh, look, you get one too. Sure, all right. Yeah, wait, you. actually, I will. All right, all right. Yeah, you got yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay, and I want to take a picture. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I do. This is super cool. Okay. Chaos Blast instead. Chaos Control. 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 That's the main one. That's the main one. That's the main one. Okay. Okay, on three, we're going to do Chaos Control, okay? Uh, everyone, you guys want to look? Voice. <laughs> <laughs> Here? Or, uh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, one. Wait, how do, I, how do I do this holding this mic? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, figure okay. it out. One, two, three. Chaos, Chaos Control. Control. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys.